Hi guys, Brendan from TAT here. Um, today I want to talk about particularly cold start misfires on direct injection petrols. Um, with a case study I've got on a Mazda 2 Sky Active here. So we've got this Mazda 2 Sky Active, only about 60,000 Ks on it, the 1.5 litre engine. Um, the complaint is that the check engine light will come on quite intermittently, so you know it'll be quite a stretch um, between when it does. Originally the customer um, went to the dealer, had some spark plugs replaced, that gave them relief for a little bit, and um, now it, it's come back on, so we've got a check engine light. So we're going to get into the vehicle, um, start with some scan data and see where we head. So in the car at the moment, as you can see, about 60,000 kilometres on it. I've not actively felt any misfire at the moment. So what I've got to go on essentially, and um, apologise for this screen. This is what happens if someone spills diesel all over your G-Scan and gets under the screen. Um, we've got a couple of misfire codes there. So I want to look at freeze frame. So we've got these misfire codes here. We need to look at the freeze frame data because I can't get this thing to misfire. So there's no active misfiring happening. The customer even says that they didn't particularly feel much happen when this, uh, uh, this check engine light recently came on. So we don't have much to go on except the data in the scan tool. Um, worth noting in the Mazda um, enhanced section there was no freeze frame. I'm in OBD2 now and there is some freeze frame. So we're going to go into that. Now what I'm looking for here is the conditions that this misfire set under because I've got nothing to go on. I can't drive this car and get it to misfire. Um, the customer did not particularly feel much of a misfire either. Um, so the things that I'm looking at here, um, 41 degrees engine coolant temp. So we're quite um, cool. We are in closed loop and our trims are quite reasonable um, all within that, that plus minus 10%. Engine speed is at 1500 RPM. Um, the map uh, suggests to me that the, the throttle is partly open because we um, don't have uh, much manifold vacuum there. Um, I note that it looks like the you know that's that's quite a, a negative number for ignition timing, but I'm not going to read into that too much. Um, moving down, so we're at a decent amount of load, 89%. Uh, the throttle is partly open as we suspected, but the accelerator pedal not so much, right? That's fairly low accelerator pedal. And I think I saw we had a vehicle speed of zero. Uh, let's see if I can find that one. Here we go, yeah, vehicle speed of zero. So all of this is suggesting to me that we're probably in what's called catalyst heating mode, uh, which many direct injections run. So why do we commonly hear about these cold start misfires on direct injections, right? Um, why does it affect that time particularly? Well, it's all to do with the fueling strategies that we can use on direct injection. So usually while we're driving along, we'll be in homogenous mode, which is much like the old port injection. We have time to spray the fuel in. It mixes with the charge of air, and it's not too difficult to create combustion. Um, during the warm-up phase on this Mazda, like a lot of other direct injection petrols, um, there's different strategies that are happening. So Mazda employ a catalyst heating strategy for that first cold starter. You may hear a Mazda, even after you do an oil change, you start the thing up, there's a real throaty high idle that they've got, right? Things that they're doing, they, they open the throttle up, even though we're sitting at idle, the throttle is actually opened up quite wide. Um, the variable valve timing is cycled through to a different position to its normal idle. And we change when we're actually doing the injection. They do it a lot later, um, we're, we're trying to heat up this catalyst. So why this creates cold start misfires in, in uh, lots of, of direct injection engines, because we've changed that fueling, we no longer get such a great uh, amount of time for the fuel to mix with the air and um, create combustion. We're relying heavily on the air traveling in at a, a predetermined amount of tumble and direction. We're hitting those, as you've seen, you know, the, the very well thought out um, grooves and, and valleys that are in the, the tops of these pistons, right? So the air travels in, it hits the top of the piston and it relies on that to actually catapult the air back up. At that point, we're going to inject fuel just as the air is traveling up to the spark plug and we're hoping to direct that fuel air mixture directly to the spark plug tip ready for the spark plug to ignite it. So if we are relying heavily on that air coming in, following a path and then putting the fuel in at the last possible second, if this air comes in and it's going everywhere which way because we've got carbon in the way, it's not going to work, right? We're not going to direct that fuel air mixture directly to the tip of the spark plug. Not a massive deal while we're driving because we've gone into a different fueling mode, so we're not relying as heavily. 
um, on the air, um, travelling up and, and getting directly to the tip of the spark plug. So that's why we get cold start misfires on direct injections. So in this case, we pulled off the intake manifold so that we could properly clean off these intake valves. Um, there's various ways you can do it, whether you want to walnut blast it, whether you want to use manual tooling. Um, you can try with a, a bit of uh, chemical and then scraping away with manual tooling. Um, by this stage though, the, the on-car, um, we're past that point, right? So the on-car chemicals, um, it's going to struggle to completely get rid of a build-up like this. That's not what they're for. They've got their own place um, to try and prevent getting to this point. So this Mazda 2, I've had a couple of these now. We're only at 60,000 Ks. Um, this, is, this is real evidence that we need to do something about these Mazda 2s before they get to this point. So this is going to go up on the website as a repair solution along with the other thousands that we've got there. Um, you can check us out at www.tat.net.au and join the thousands of other members sharing knowledge, information and experience. Thank you.